Ooh, that perfect timing. Music cut out right as I got here. What is up, guys? Oh, God. Don't, don't restart. Let's turn you off for now. There we go. What is up, guys? Thank you for joining me. Today, we are going to be playing some Dream Daddy. Uh, this is a game that's been requested a few times. Personally, I think it's going to be a lot of fun just because... You know, I like doing the voices, I like doing goofy games, and this game is a very silly game that I think everyone will appreciate. Plus, listen to this music. It's a banger. So, let's just hop right into this game. So, to those of you who have not read the title, this is Dream Daddy, a dad dating simulator. I will be finding my ideal daddy to date. And that is the point of this game. All right, so we're starting off with some. That's snoring. I'm not just making weird noises for fun. Dad. Dad, wake up. Uh, pretend to be dead. I let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad. This hasn't worked since I was six. I'm sorry, Amanda, but this is the end for me. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath to you all my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over my recliner. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spooning a moving box. A yawn and stretch. Morning, Manda Panda. Yikes, dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Ow, my feelings, but okay, fair. I have stank breath in the morning. Oh, dear God. Uh, let's see, we got bod types. I guess I'll just build me. Athletic binder? What is the difference? Oh, I just got, I got that stomach showing. Uh, well, this is more accurate because I'm not that hairy. Uh, I'd like to say I at least have not that complexion. My head shape? I don't know what my head looks like. Uh, I have kind of a defined jaw. Maybe not that defined. Oh! Oh, okay, yeah, I think that's kind of accurate. Hair. Uh, hair's kind of a mess today. I mean, that'd be, that. that's accurate with how messy it is. Uh, oh, that's kind of close. That's also not bad. And then, uh, hair's a bit, oh, not that dark. Hmm. Yeah, probably that. I'm like mustardy. Nah, I'm not a ginger. There we go. Big Chad Chatterson, Zoe in the house. Showing up for dads, but not Minecraft. I see who it is. Eyes? How are my eyes? Do I have... Oh, a woo. A woo. <laughs> Big Shujo eyes. Oh my god. Uh, Let's just... I don't know. I don't know what my eyes look like. I think just normal... Mm, not that's not normal. Uh, am I that flirtatious constantly? I don't think so. Which of these looks the most normal? I don't know, man. For some reason these look the most normal, but I don't think I look that depressed all the time. Yeah, you know, let's do that. That's not bad. And then I kind of have a. I do kind of have a. Yeah. It's like a grayish, greenish blue. My eyes a mess. My nose. I don't know, man. Uh, looking at stream that. Ooh, no, not that. Maybe that one. Yeah, that looks close enough. Uh, mouths. Ooh, ooh, gotta have that grin. What the? F Interesting. We could just go blank face. I could, sh <laughs> I could show my little teeths. I could do the little cat mouth. Let's just do basic smile. 
I'm happy to be here. Actually, I don't even know. I don't know if I can have that as my just constant face. Yeah, that's not bad. Uh, brows. I feel like just those. Those are normal enough. Facial hair. Oh, they don't have... I don't, I don't have that. I don't have any of these. I guess I'll just be clean shaven here. Glasses. Uh, I actually don't have my gamer glasses today. If they do have the gamer glasses. But we won't have them either. Uh, piercings don't have any of those. Clothings. Oof. Eggy nipples. I like that. Um, hammy. Ooh. I'm liking the suits. I don't I don't wear suits very often, but I like those. Uh, if we're being accurate, I'm just wearing plain white t-shirt. So let's just go plain white t-shirt. Please don't do the smile. It's horrifying. Uh, okay, fine. It's just, I don't know. This makes my nose seem too far away. Is that... I don't know. I don't, I don't look at my face that much. I don't know what my nose looks like. Is that my nose? Oh, Grant did a hydrate. Oh, Grant, please don't tell Mr. Marlat about this. <laughs> uh, Mr. Marlat will not forgive me if he found out I played this game. I hate, I don't know, I kind of like, I kind of hate just the plain demon eyes. I don't want to spend too long on this screen. What, <laughs> what about that? What do we think about just the straight... Actually, like face comp composition, like the amount of space that takes up is about right. I definitely don't have sexy eyes like that. You know what? Let's just do tired eyes. I feel like tired eyes are kind of... I don't think I have tired eyes, but it fits. Alright. Looking good, daddy. And uh, we'll do... Uh... Actually... Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I have to look at my... My computer when I type. B <laughs> Brian Beans. Be that dad. Be that dad. Dad tip number 25. Drink plenty of water. I don't have water, but I do have Fresca. <laughs> mm, okay, I gotta get a good voice for her. Um, Did you fall asleep? It's just gonna be my basic voice. Did you fall asleep packing? I got most of it done. Uh, I think. Searching around the room. It looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos and little photo albums. Whoa! I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. That's the coolest baby I've ever seen. The only way your mother and I, the only way your father and I. Well, I'll, I'll go with mother. The only way your mother and I can get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, you'd start crying again. You spent the first two years of your life with sunglasses on. I feel like that would horribly damage your vision, but okay. Nice. Halloween, when you were maybe four... Oh my god, that dragon costume. You couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Princess Dragon. Hmm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Hmm. Right. Yep, definitely repress that memory. And this was you in your horse phase. Oh, no. Dad... I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Oh, no. I don't think that was his. Amanda lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatched it away and hold it above her with my superior dad arms. She was the horse girl. Nice try, but this is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you and your ska band. Ouch, kid. This communist manifesto had a chance back in the day. Oh, execute her and start over. Uh, I look off into the distance and reminisce about my rad horn section. <laughs> hey, it's Emma P. Aww. 
No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Dad, Emma R has been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. Oh, right. Emma P was the one who... Tried to steal people's pets, fired a flaming tennis ball at the police station, or pooped her pants during a sleepover. Which of these... I mean, that's just awkward. I don't want to go with that one. That is illegal, and that is morally illegal. So we're going to go with flaming tennis balls. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you. Oh, right. <laughs> I was a wild child. I was six when you did it. Okay, Amanda, I wasn't aiming for the police station. It just so happened that there was a police station in the vicinity of where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Yeah, I remember you explaining that to the police. They didn't believe me either. Anyways, I gotta show this to Emma R. Later she'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won. Oh, that's cute. I'd even acknowledge that. That's cute as well. The art for this game is really cool. Yeah, and I got a $20 gift card to McFridays. Hey, if that's supposed to be the equivalent of McDonald's, that's like enough food for three grown men. And then you got fo food poisoning from the cheesy tostada blasts. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. What? Dad. Still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. <laughs> Still proud of you, though. Amanda reaches deep down in the box and pulls out one last photo. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. I finally decide to break the silence. That was the day we adopted you, dude. That was the day we were born. Well, based on skin tone, I'll just say that was the, that was the day you were born. It's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right in the hospital parking lot. It wasn't anything big, just a fender bender. But of course I was freaking out, and the little old lady who crashed into us was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds my hand, looks me directly in the eyes, the calmest I've ever seen her. She says, it's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Man, that was a sad tone. I didn't expect that. She was right, you know. I stare at the picture for longer. Maybe too long. I miss her. Can't even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. She pats me on the back. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The moving van won't wait forever. You're right. Oh, gosh. There's gonna be a lot of narrating for this first part. It gets a lot more decision and story based farther on. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. I'm liking this car as well. I, I, again, I love the art and the clutter. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Hmm. Hey, remember when I sat at the front window playing catch? You always had very strong arms. Hey, remember when I sat at the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? You were a very imaginative child. Hey, remember when I broke the back window? Pla we get it, Amanda. You break stuff. And there'll be plenty more stuff to break in the new place. Memories to make and stuff to break. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little bit to leave behind. I'm ready. The moving van begins to pull away and I get the car in position to follow. I watch our house, our old house, disappear in the rearview mirror. So, so what? So sell me on our cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. Nestled in beautiful scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features. Washer dryer hookups a two guard garage. Multiple places to sleep. Not only are there bedrooms for your sleeping pleasure, but couches and floor spaces where you can, <laughs> yes, catch a wink. Yeah. What a deal. I mean, if sleep weren't for the week. You sleep more than anybody I know. Hmm. I admit my faults, Pops. I keep it real. 
Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Good spin. I think it's great. Uh, won't we be closer to a lot of cool stuff that we can walk to? So, you know, we don't have to waste gas? I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know... Amanda, you know you're going to have to learn how to parallel park at some point, right? Mm. Not going to happen, Pops. I, I think I can parallel park. You know, if I was being chased by a murderer, my life depended on it, but... Haven't had to do it yet. Unless you count pulling into the very last spot in parallel parking, which I don't think does. I think someone just needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. I don't know how to do that either. Have you met the neighbors yet? Nope, not yet. But the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. I just realized you guys can see my mouse flinging it around. If you're being chased by a murderer, why in God's name would you parallel park? Uh -huh, listen, man. I was just trying to think of a situation in which I'd have to parallel park. Oh yeah, also, fixed... Is this right? Oh, I don't know. Fix the Elgato capture card thing. Uh, it won't update as stream goes. I will have to manually update it, but we are, what is that? Yeah, 7.84% towards our goal of getting the Elgato capture card, which will make um, the quality of stream a lot better, and it'll allow me to stream on Xbox, so more game selections and more friends playing as well. So if you guys want to see that and you want to support that, donate or subscribe. I will, you know, gladly take both. Uh, if you subscribe, you don't have to deal with ads. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, not yet, but the neighborhood seems pretty quiet. Hmm. Games on screen, why am I here? What? Also, yeah, I know. I actually have it working for once. So why don't you have so why don't you have to chase any rowdy teens off your lawn? So you won't have to have to, God, God, I read chat for five seconds and I can't speak anymore. You are the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. I'm in my last year of high school. I'm practically dust. Yeah, you're a real... Don't you dare. Senior. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. I'm just going to ignore that. But I won't forget it. So what's item number one in the new house agenda? Well, first, I'll need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes that's blocking the living room. I still have to install the washer and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise we we're going to take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then check the, check the area out. We pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown and the for sale sign is still in the yard. hey yeah! And with a swift kick from Amanda, the for sale sign is no more. Already destroying stuff. Nice form, Sweet Pea. I got a problem with authority. <laughs> I'm so proud. Man, all that karate chopping tucked me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. We need to unpack first. I need some coffee. Did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? You know it. Thanks for moving us to an area where there's, uh, where the dog to person ratio is very high. I only want what's best for you. I hope you're prepared for the frequency at which I interrupt our conversations to yell "dog" to rock it way up. I mean, you do that a lot already. Hey, it's a dog! Wait, false alarm. It's just a funny shaped rock. If you want to see real dogs so bad, let's go to that park around the corner. It's just a funny shaped rock. What? I check the card reader ATMs before you swipe. That is good advice. Try to pull on the the card reader thing. And if it comes off, it's it's a fake thing. Scammers put those on. Amanda and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street. Flowers are in bloom. And the faint smell of nearby, faint smell of nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Mm. Too nice. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. You can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroll over there? Government operative. We are on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. 
Toddlers chase each other through the playground. Ew. And all and dogs of all sa- shapes and sizes romp through the grass. Yay. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over to it when... Heads up! Ow. A frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Oof. A corgi with... Oh! <laughs> Special boy! Oh, look at his handkerchief. Uh, a corgi with a neat plaid handkerchief around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. Did you throw this thing at your head? I like your neck. I'll just go hello. Arf, arf. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh, God, this is the cutest dog. Uh, impart upon me your wisdom, tiny dog. I, I think he'd appreciate petting more. But where do I pet the dog? Oh. <gasps> Dare we try butt pats. My dogs love butt pats. I give him the customary pats. The dog loves this. Good call. Always a good call. You definitely could have caught that. I'm afraid to give it a voice without knowing who it is. Oh, that's the right voice. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over us and takes the frisbee from me. You know, frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Uh... I'll catch you with my teeth next time. It's a new technique. Traditionally, you're not supposed to aim. For, that's a little past progressive. Let's go. It's a new technique. It's like disc golf, but the goal's my face. Looks like you're winning. Hey, I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm Brian, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look it over to Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Hi. Your dog's cool. Okay, at least we have different spellings. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's so great to see another father and daughter out here on such a sunny day. Where's yours? Brian gestures over to the grassy knoll. JFK. Uh, where a young girl sits on a checkered blanket. She's reading a book bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. This is Daisy. She's reading the Brothers Karamazov. Sure. Her teacher tells me that she's reading her reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. That she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. I don't. Uh, how old is she? Ten. She's a precocious little youngster. I got it. (laughs) It took me a second. Whoa. My natural dad instincts kicked in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh no. It's happening. What? (gasps) <gasps> Pokemon battle! Go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Uh, I... That's my girl. Amanda! Oh, Amanda, get in there! I'm gonna switch those up so much. Okay, okay. Okay. Um... Item... Okay, child... Oh, I can't go back. Uh, spelling bee photo. Fumbling through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully, this will be her third win in a row. Yikes, you lose 5 HP. Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her elementary school computer lab. She's a president, too, of course. Dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club. Or a computer lab. Q is 10. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Um, okay, flee. Daughter. Can't switch daughters. Amanda's your only daughter. Uh, okay. You know, it's worth a try. Alright, let's do child art. Maybe, hopefully she's into academics, but not art, you know? You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in her first grade. Wow. I did not even know what a cornucopia was in the first grade. Cute. It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Brian loses 10 HP. You gain 20 health. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize. A canoe. A fucking canoe? She, they say, what? She's 10. Why does she need a canoe? We're taking it out next weekend. How is that even possible? Amanda could barely get one of those sticky hand things. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Okay, well, it's a good thing I healed. 
Uh, okay, let's brag. Amanda here just won a, recently won a local photography award. Wow, congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. Daisy actually just won a statewide poetry contest. You lose 15 HP. Shit. Oh, he's just ahead of me. Uh, we already know she has better grades. Alright, Band-Aid. With a flourish, you produce a Band-Aid from your pocket. Take a knee and start to apply it to Amanda's arm. What are you doing, Dad? Being a protective parent. Anyone who creates an unusual gesture, you lose 10 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy. Amanda's was potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't time to bring it up. You lose 10 HP. Damn it. Oh no. The band-aid didn't help. I guess we just brag. Last week, unprompted, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. Oh, we're keeping this close. Daisy here has had all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Amanda self-consciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. It's extra powerful. I lose 20 HP. Oh, Brian. Uh, okay, let's just brag again. Uh, Amanda's in all honor classes this semester. Brian loses 10 HP. Oh, really? I'm actually talking to Daisy's teachers about having her skip a grade. Even Amanda kind of bristles that one. You lose 20 HP. Dang, he's really got us beat. Boy, it's been such a great treat getting to know you two. Ugh, did he have to add insult to injury by being such a gracious winner? So, I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood? We just moved in. Do you live around here? Yeah, we all live in that cul-de-sac next to this coffee shop. What a coincidence! That's where we live too! Small world. Yeah, Daisy and I are in that little ranch-style house on the corner. I know that house. It's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscaped. Does this guy have to outdo me at everything? What a lovely place! Well, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Really nice meeting you guys. You'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye! Brian and Daisy walk farther into the park with Maxwell happily trotting along in tow. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to one-up us? Trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? Uh, I believe you had up a bit of thing for horses. Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in comparative horse studies. It's not too late. Oh, it's not too late to minor in horse creative writing. Yeah. Too close to the truth, Dad. Let us never speak of the fantastic adventures of Sir Horsington the Brave in Epic in Seven Parts by Amanda Beans. Amanda Beans, that's an amazing name. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Take a nap, unpack, coffee shop. What do we think, guys? Should we actually socialize or should we just go nap? Oh, I just noticed my mic is blocking it. We can fast forward. Nap. Oh, we could also save. Just in case we need always choose nap. Alright, let's go nap. All the sunlight is making me real tired. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. You slept for 14 hours. Exactly. <laughs> when lifting weights, use proper form and full range of motion. It's very important, especially on heavy lifts. Learn deadlift and clean before you ever do them. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Brian! Bro! Hey. I turn... Oh my god, I keep nailing these voices. I turn around and am greeted by his familiar face jogging up to us. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Hmm. Holy wow. I haven't seen Craig in forever. Hmm. It's been too long, dude. Yeah, wow, you look great. <laughs> yeah, I cleaned up my act cleaned up his act are you kidding me he's ripped amanda this is my friend craig we went to college together we were roommates for a while too <laughs> amanda dude you probably don't remember me but you're so big now hello and hello cute baby oh thank you the last time i saw i saw you i think you're about her size 
This is River. Say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Oh, look at her face. Are you babysitting? Nah, dude. River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exam with bad hangovers, and the next we're both fathers. Where have you been, man? Nice. I was working out in California and just relocated the business to Maple Bay. A working out business? No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh. I mean, Ashley. Ashley's her name. She actually still goes by Smashley, and uh, we got divorced last year. So he's available. Interesting. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. It's old news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. It's all... Good. Working together, word. Twins? You have three kids? That's too many. Ain't life something, bro, right? Kegstan Craig is a father of three? Huh? Kegstan Craig? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was my old college nickname. He got it because he did a lot of keg stands. It's that thing where you do a headstand on a keg and then drink from the keg. Right. He was very good at it. Uh, bro, I hate to be that kind of guy, but I'm in the middle of my daily jog, and I really got to keep my heart rate up. Brought River along for, you know, resistance training. You jog daily? I jog yearly. On January 1st, when I promised myself that I'm going to jog daily for the rest of the year, but give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Oh. Well, it's never too late to get back into it, dude. You should come join me sometime. Haha, <laughs> I don't know. Hey. Come on, it'd be fun. We could dra grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days. Alright, sure. Sounds great. Oh. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. Good to see you guys. Greg gives a little wave, put his earbuds back in, then jogs off. I can't believe Greg is ripped and half kids. <laughs> I'm reeling. <laughs> Why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for anything. Any living thing, including and especially himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. Amanda, he opened up a new jar of marinara sauce and then drank it like that was a normal thing people do. It was unholy. And then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he said, and I quote, it's basically a smoothie, bro. It is too late when you're crippled. What? Uh, I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. I won't do that. I'll work out, but I won't jog. He's like a totally different person. Anyways, we better get home. I'll have plenty of time to reflect on how old I feel later. Drinking too- oh. <laughs> My computer's too powerful. Amanda and I flop down into the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back into these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Of course! Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Yeah. A dog? Yes. Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck, I gotta name it. That's what it'll cost for you, for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. That's a mood. Well, a dog's a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slide through the empty mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda darts over the envelopes and sh shuffles through them. Sorry, envelopes. I must leave for a moment to shower. Don't do anything too important. Well, you and your 45-minute showers. You could stay. Uh, she pulls one out and throws the rest back onto the floor. Yeah. This is from McGowan School of Art, College of Art and Design. Open it. Mm -hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Hour long showers are where it's at. Don't be hating. Not, well, during stream is when I'll hate. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but that's okay. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application. Blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to the McGowan College of Art and Design. Mm. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Mm. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. Coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me that they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. Oh, yeah. She's going to photography school. Bro. That's, that's got to be so stressful. Not only do you have to worry about grades, but you also have to actually send in art. Like, I don't know. I just feel like art is so subjective. I would always worry about that. Also, why? I'm so scrunched over to one side of the screen. Nope, that's the wrong one. There we go. Let me make sure I'm actually centered now. There we go. I mean, not that you guys should be staring at me anyways, but come on. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine? Or are you just saying that? Huh? I'm fine, really. Yeah, that face says you're perfectly fine. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Wait, real quick. Just the observe the surroundings. Love the cactuses. Succulents are great. They have uh, the white special edition of the Xbox. Um, either a really fucking thick floppy disk, or that's like a GameCube. I'm loving this man's. Record player. They have an actual audio system. So I should be staring at you directly the whole stream. Uh, you should probably at least look away a little bit for the game. I mean, I know I'm pretty easy to stare at. <laughs> pretty easy on the eyes, right? No. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, your life, I guess. I'm not going to say you can't. Uh, oh, we have the horsey. Horse skill. And board games, I think. Okay. Oh, and before I forget, MR and MP are sleeping over tonight. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yeah. Well, I'll have you know that I'm conveniently already have plans for tonight, so, you, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Yeah? What are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Uh, I'm going clubbing. I'm secretly the mayor of this town, or gotta attend the union meeting. Hmm. I like being secretly the mayor, but clubbing could be interesting. That sounds like somewhere we could actually go, and we don't even know what this guy's job is. Let's do the goofy one. Amanda, the town needs me. I need to perform my mayoral duties. I must don my top hat and wear my monocle so that I may preside over my mayor stuff. I think you're thinking of the guy from Monopoly. He was a mayor, right? Oh. He was not. Right. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to stay home, finish unpacking, go to bed, go out and watch the game. Kevin, I'll have you decide this one. Which one are we doing, bud? Are we going to unpack? Are we going to go to bed? Or are we going to watch the game? Both of these sound like he's going to be in the... I guess if you're asleep, you're not really in the way. But stay home and finish unpacking also kind of seems like you're in the way. Kevin says the game. Nice. Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. The game on TV, somewhere other than here. Well, NFL's over and basketball's boring, so. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go do drugs and commit light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned that you're hanging with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime at this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? 
Yes, Dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. Pat on the head. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Oh. No, making fun of sports is played out. Oh. All right then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget you have a meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have a, I hope they have a fun night. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can never remember their names. Just as I'm heading out towards my room, the doorbell rings. When you're young, you have your health, so now it's time to take the risks. Oh, nighttime. How could it possibly... Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was just about to head out. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello! Oh, okay, maybe the wrong voice. A handsome, clean-cut man stands at my door, brandishing a blade of cookies. Hello? Uh, let's see. What what does he look like? I'm, I'm trying not to do all the same Christian white man voices. Uh, I just, I can, I'm going to end up doing my voice again. It's all just going to merge into the same voice. Hi! I know it's kind of late. That's just my voice. The, hi! I know it's kind of late. I baked my, I baked way too many cookies, and I can't have these in the house or I'll eat them all. Oh, where are my manners? My name's Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Brian. That's what my name is. I saw the moving van and thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know that she baked them herself. He's a Christian white man. This is the only one where it fits. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Joseph leans in and whispers. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. We both share a raff. Kids, right? Yeah. Amanda pokes her head out of her room and immediately hones in on the cookies. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. <gasps> I subbed again. Thank you, Zoe. Tranquil Corgi subbed at Tier 1. They've been subscribed for two months concurrently on a two-month streak. Thank you very much, Zoe. Uh, Joseph hands her a plate of cookies with a smile. Let's do the Elgato capture card update. No, it didn't. All right, we're going to have to update that again manually. Dot, 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 dot. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Amanda, come. Man, she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name's Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are tough also. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, they'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. What have you done? <laughs> oh, um, I meant, don't worry. You didn't mean to be rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met. My social life is already in tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Wait, did we forget about other Brian? I need food, BRB. No, you do not. Uh, yeah, okay. Is the, is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. Oh. Um, uh, I'm sorry for your loss. No, no, it's alright. Wow, this is uncomfortable. We stand there quietly for a moment, acutely aware of how awkward we made things. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. A second after, I hear a knock on the door. Opening it, I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hi, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? That sounds great. My daughter... Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake hands to seal the deal. Well, neighbor, I'll try to get to bed. See you on 3 p.m. on Saturday. Sure thing, neighbor. 
but they, I assume this is the beginning of the week. Joseph start walks, starts walking away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm the youth minister at a church down the street. Oh, I, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Nice. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. And with that, Joseph's gone. You seem nice. Amanda walks back into the living room with crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I'd ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. So you ate all of them anyways. DM has helped. Right. Well, kiddo, I'm going to go catch the game. Have fun, Dad. Pro tip, Dad. If you don't have anything else to say, don't say anything at all. That's just advice in general. Wow. I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm... Is it getting darker? I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. I forgot I'm supposed to be a boomer. So I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool. Okay, we're marching. Marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? Jim and Kim's. A big burned out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, it'll do. Ah, oh, look at the art in this place. What is that? Wow, I just, I love these small f details. Can't even tell what's on there. Booze. The state of Texas. Beer. Nice sign. Interesting, got some duct tape, ashtrays. This, the bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool table sounds in the back as a patron laughs, laughs in joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover over the bartender. Hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. <laughs> oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TV walls. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The bears are winning? That's not normal. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I didn't get any con hoping I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bars are wearing distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for this team is still all in good fun. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me, so anywhere within three seats. Hey, sailor. What is that voice? Oh, hello. Good to see some fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? I don't know why I went southern. Why did I go southern? Oh, no. Uh, I just moved into this part of town today. I'm Brian, by the way. Are you watching the game? Yes, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh, I love that team. I also love the game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Um, uh, buy gal a drink? Uh, you have a lot of drink left. I don't think you need more. Uh, maybe some other time. Sit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. This game and got the game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close to what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. I thought we were gonna be talking to the bartender, is he not? Go team. I'll just do the same voice as the bartender. Oh, that's the right voice. 
He sits alone, brooding over a beer, keeping an eye on the game. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I say that my team is superior. That's where you'd be wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respective glass at the man drinking his whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truth is for, truce is formed between us based on our mutual love for the game. The emotions for the, to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Brian. Oh, you must be new here. Mary, Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? Uh, some tells me he likes shots. Ooh, shots fired. I don't like him. Oh, 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 oh. Can I load? Can I go back? Oh, no, that's so far. That's so far back. Well, that's going to be a problem. Robert nods to Neil, who, shoes, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one over to me. Here's your health. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Brian, this guy's out of my friends league, but I think I've played my cards. We'll be right in the pals in no time. Uh, oh, I can barely even see the hand tattoo. With a jacket, rugged good looks. Mm, tattoos can be pretty symbolic. Let's go with the safe jacket. I like your jacket. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Uh, he seems like he'd enjoy running from my problems. The usual. I like your style. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta powder my nose. Uh oh. I was hoping Neil wouldn't be back. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Neil and... Neil and Robert just have very similar voices. Huh, I guess so. I gotta admit, Robert has a gruff charm to him. If the guy like that thinks I'm cool, then he really must be. Then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm going to head home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. He stops and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Brian. So we doing this or what? Uh, what? You know, do you want to come inside or not? A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Uh, that seems a little hasty. I mean, I, that wasn't even a first date. That was literally a first meeting. You gotta, you gotta wait your turn, Robert. Uh, I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Sure. Well, he seemed weirdly pleased about that. He was smiling. I head home, head buzzing with the whiskey. 
What did he mean by, are we going to do this or not? I plop down on the couch, and I'm asleep before I even get a chance to take my shoes off. Oh, I just assumed he was talking um, non-TOS friendly stuff. Maybe I was wrong there. Maybe he just wanted to, I don't know, play Xbox or something. Minimize eating. My computer's too good. I wake up to a text with an unknown number. Rise and shine, early bird. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Oh, Craig. Whoops. Must have winked back out. I check my phone again. Hey, bud. Still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. God. The last thing I want to do right now is work out. But Craig is Craig. I do want to catch up. Let's go to the gym. I don't like cardio, but... Hey, my man, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet in 20? After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing, meet me at the gym. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of uh, cardio, but it works. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and... Hey, wait, I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Did I hear a following sound? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Is that Johnny or Joni Universe 86? Whichever it is, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, this may become a series. I don't know. It's not a. It's not a crazy long game, so I'm tempted. If you guys really like this video, I'm tempted. But anyways, thank you, Joni, or Johnny. Uh, Amanda must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes. Hi, Johnny. I think Johnny is welcome. <laughs> I love the emotes, bro. Little Flanders in there. Alright. Well, thank you for, uh, sorry, that was just reading up on chat, making sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, well, thank you for joining. Thank you for following, good sir. I hope you enjoy this video. Um, I reluctantly brush my teeth, throw on the only clothes that I own that are even kind of gym appropriate, and head out. Glad you're enjoying this oddly homoerotic video of ours. Well, it hasn't gotten too erotic yet. Uh, the neighborhood is quiet and serene in the early morning. Birds chirp. The grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty clouded. crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. Hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. Coffee before a workout? Mm, that's not good for your tummy. You ready to kick some butt? Help! Uh, I mean, positive mental attitude. Especially when you're working out. Positive mental attitude is the key. I'm here to party. Hey. That's the spirit, my dude. Bro. We head into the gym and I'm, and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them? He high-fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be walking. So, I know we're on the treadmills. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals. Very good. What is all this other stuff? Craig laughs. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee you that all of them serve a specific purpose for building body mass. Muscle mass. I watch as a dude in front... As a dude... Muscle... I watch as a dude in a muscle tee flexes a muscle I'd even know existed on a machine that I once thought was used to process grain into flour. What is that? Why is that guy doing that to himself? That is a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? 
training to crush people's skulls with his thighs using a medieval torture device, praying to some sort of pain god. I like this one. He's he's trying to make his thighs so strong that he could crush people's skulls with them. Yeah, that's pretty much the only reason I work out. Oh no, Craig is turning up the speed. I better do the same. Did I see eggplants flying out of him? I've been so focused on reading. Did he just shoot eggplants at me? How uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Nice. Couple of years. And what did you do when you're not dadding or working or buffing? Oh, I coached my twin softball team. That still counts as dadding and buffing. Ah, uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Uh, I love learning. I try to live my <laughs> my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song as long as as much as possible. Check out my uh, my hot dad bod. I spend most of my time in front of the mirror, mining my Adonis-like figure that I've worked so hard to sculpt. <laughs> By that I mean, lay horizontally and watch bad television. We're jogging now. Oh god, we're jogging now. I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How's he doing this so effortly? effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hey, remember when my fish died in college? <sighs> no, I don't like this story. <laughs> Oh my god, he's really bumping up the speed again. I guess I better do it too. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. And we're at the party, and you vowed to make me feel better? You tell me to create a distraction, so of course, I do a sick keg stand and get everybody cheering. And then I try to steal a fish of the fish tank at the party with my bare hands, like an idiot. And then you drop the fish, and it's flopping around, so you panic. So you run up to me to the keg, to the post keg stand with a dying, dirty fish in your hands that you've scooped off the ground, and you're yelling for the, me that we have to leave. So we're running out of a frat party, trying to give it mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. We get him home and get him into a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim. And the next day, he's alive and well. They never did catch the great fish thieves at Grand Ridge University. And they never... They will! I shoot off the end of the treadmill, treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Dude, bro, are you okay? Greg offers me a hand and looks over at me for injuries. I'm... fantastic. I manage to stand up and rub my, rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Yeah. All right, well, here. I brought you this. Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here we go. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Wow, this is really good. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one. Well, I'm going to put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. Dang, I'm liking these beats right now. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me? Literally. Man, I gotta work on this dad bod. Listen, I'm just saying, if you've ever looked at, like, you know, Olympic level or, like, you know, really strong, like, record-breaking lifters, heavyweight lifters, they got dad bods. Like, uh, the, the Thor guy who, uh, deadlifted, like, a thousand and ten pounds. He's got that, he got that big old dad belly. I'm just saying, nothing wrong with dad bod. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so old. Oh no. 
I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Is this dude narcoleptic? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. He got nothing on you. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. A bird in the hand is better than a bird in the eye. Yeah. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I am barely awake and feel pretty haggard, but hoping nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 203 or 208? I spot a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Uh, excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks at me with heavy lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. Are you going to help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs to the left. Can't miss them. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's classroom anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. That youth. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Hmm? Lucian, don't you have a third period to get to? Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We are not cool. Hmm. You must be Brian. Summer period is... This period is almost... Why did I get summer from? This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. I'm just trying to do my voices as close to their hums and haws. All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator and J.D. Stillinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. The whole class erupts into laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Hmm? Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. Sweet man, Jacob. <laughs> Remember to do the reading in your textbook and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Oh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Both, you know? Budget cuts. Right. Ah. Thanks for so thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Oh. Please call me Hugo. Eh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? Eh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student. But I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has rarely been doing and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda, Amanda always shared everything with me. Hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I don't know. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, well, I don't even know if that's true. She's fine, obviously, that's not the truth. We just moved? Uh, this seems the most related. I haven't noticed anything different about her. She always tends to put on a happy face no matter what. Because that is what she kind of did with the, um, the letter from her college. She's just like, oh, well, they're going to be coming over. It's fine. Mm -hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal, and I'd appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important art school is to her, and I'd hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to, to, uh, uh, I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. 
On my way out, I stopped, thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. You want fuck? Hey, Hugo. Hmm? Yes? They ever catch that rye? Hmm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's funny. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes f for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops, hops in the passenger seat. So, do you have Hun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? I have no idea what that is. It was a very productive meeting. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. You can make sending it home. Let's go to the mall food court. Nah, you don't want to go to the food court. Makes make some at home. Cool. I think with our powers combined, we can throw together a gourmet meal worthy of the food channel. I like cooking at home. I don't know about that, but I can promise you it'll at least be edible. That's the spirit. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. That's okay, because that's sometimes what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good for to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe their parents have also dealt with similar situations. Aww. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, it's good to share. Love you. What's up, Enigma? Yes, it is Dream Daddy time. Thank you for joining, buddy. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Mm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you hadn't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Mm. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. Yeah. It's fine. He, he's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just, I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to be going to the same school? Yep. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Yeah. Uh, it's a... I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Who you texting? Yeah. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. Do you... Like Noah? Yeah. What? No. Dad. Uh, I can't believe you would. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Uh, gross. Sorry, sorry, just asking. Definitely, definitely likes him. Dad, he's just my friend. A guy and a girl could be friends. He's my friend. Mm. Cap. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation's over. Drinking too much. Amanda and I get back home and start cooking some dinner. I found this artisanal mac and cheese recipe online that I've been dying to try. Artisanal? That's There's two ingredients related to mac and cheese. Mac and then cheese. Dad, please try to enjoy the finer things in life. I think you of all people should be able to appreciate what one can do with cheese. Definitely. Yeah. Plus, it has bacon in it. Aren't we as a society collectively over bacon? Oh. Bacon never stopped being good. It just has a PR problem. Oh. We get to work on the recipe. Amanda measures things out and hands them to me to dump in a bowl so I can feel useful. Amanda puts me on bacon duty, so I chop a bunch and toss it in the pan to get it sizzling. 
The key to good mac and cheese is a balance of texture and flavor, Pops. Not only are we going to want the fullness of the cheese and the bacon, but we also want to counterbalance it with the crunchy mouthfeel of breadcrumbs. Not a huge fan of breadcrumbs and mac and cheese, but I respect it. Check on bacon, mouthfeel, mouthfeel? What's a mouthfeel? You know, when you eat stuff and it, the texture, uh, listen, I've been watching a lot of the Food Channel and I honestly don't know what it means, but it makes me feel sophisticated to say. Hey, I'm making mac and cheese too. Twinkles? I think you meant to say twi- yeah, twinsies? No, no, I get that. Every time I watch that channel, I just feel, in order, hungry, jealous, insecure about my cook ab cooking ability, and then hungry again. I like the mouthfeel of that sentence. Oh my god. Amanda, mouthfeel isn't just about food, it's also about words that are fun to say. Hmm. Gregarious? Uh, let's check on the bacon real quick. Getting there, starting to brown up. Caddy Wumpus! Uh, ooh, I like tabernacle. All of a sudden, the bacon bursts into flames. I must have not been paying attention to how hot the pan was. Damn it! <laughs> as soon as I didn't check on the bacon. Fire! Fire! Oh, God! Fire! I ran out of the kitchen looking for anything to put out the fire. I grab a cup of water, and Amanda snatches it out of my hands. Yeah, that's not how a grease fire works. Hmm. Nope. She puts it down and calmly grabs a lid from the pantry. She places it on top of the flames and turns down the heat. I can finally calm down. Did I almost just burn our brand new house down because I was too busy saying silly words? Indubitably. 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 Cool. Who wants takeout? Grilled cheese with Twinkies as bread sounds really good. Incorrect. Amanda and I order some Chinese food and sit and eat it on the couch of our new living room. She flips to the TV. My heart valves are useless anyways. Honestly. Oh, cool. Long Haul Ice Road Paranormal Ghost Truckers is on. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have yet to make it over... They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice roads melt, but they're also hunting ghosts. Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone. The, the twin brother truck driving ghost hunting... Hunting duo find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! Them go the ghost got to control the truck. I can't steer them in them ice roads. Let me yell that EMP to come in the cave with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. I almost got it. If you listen carefully, it's saying you're about to die. Mm. That's because we're about to die. You. <laughs> this is art. The episode ends, and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Uh, don't use metal utensils on non-stick frying pans. That is correct. You will fuck up the non-stick part, and then you're just left with a shitty frying pan. I'm pouring myself a drink. More sleeping noises. Oh, God, gotta put the cap back on. There we go. More sleeping noises. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. Amanda's much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be in the bookcase. So, you excited for the cookout today? <laughs> if there's food I'm excited, excited to beef up my grilling skills. Eh. I'm not a huge fan of grilling. Oh, I like to grill steak. Let's just say, if there's food, I'm excited. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. No, Zoe loves those, and they're okay. Hmm. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Okay, so that's... Okay. Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? 
I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. You'll get that butterfly to emerge in the cocoon. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early, just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Joseph's house with, store -bought, with a store-bought veggie plate. We didn't want to risk burning down the house again. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler, sprinkler and adults chat in small clusters. I see a set of veggie plate down on the table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Uh, hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. And you brought veggies. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come on over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Oh, he looks lovely. Hi. Uh, this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Oh, Chris, Christian, and Christy, they hate their lives. They stare creepily and say nothing. All right, demon children. Their eyes are also, like, gray. Ugh. Yeah, her face says it all. Then, of course, there's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely life, Mary? Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You'll have to... Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is our new neighbor Brian and his daughter Amanda. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine I need to attend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh god, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and search fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two, enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Here, let me introduce you around. Have you met Matt yet? Who? Oh. Hey, Matt, come meet our new neighbors. This is Brian and Amanda. Amanda and I both give him a wave. Uh, what happened with Mary? Oh, we saw her at a bar and she was vaguely flirting with us, question mark, slash trying to get a drink. Uh, hey, I'm Matt. God, I do the same voice for every single one. Uh, yeah, just, uh, hey, I'm Matt. Nice to meet you two. Matt runs the coffee shop down the street. He bakes a mean carrot cake. Matt grins sheepishly. He also knows everything about music. His record collection tapes up a whole wall of his house. That's me, the music guy. Satan happens. That's a bit of an understatement. He also used to be in a... Hey. <laughs> I'm just the music guy. He's always stoked to discuss music, uh, tunes and stuff. Hey. That's so cool. I love music. Matt's ears seem to perk up. Oh yeah? What, what kind of stuff do you listen to? Dad rock, top tier stuff, almost exclusively songs about being sad. What does this guy look like he taught? Like, dad rock is tempting. Uh, let's save. Let's save. I feel like this is a very important decision. Let's go dad rock. You know, with the guitars and the drums and the lyricism about growing older and the world changing before your eyes and you don't know how to, you don't know how to deal with it. Oh. Buddy, I relate to that. I just realized I forgot to do his voice. Hey. Cool, alright. Wait, I'm not no no, I wanna see what this other answer is. 
if you press uh, no shit I already clicked add rock ignore me please top tier stuff only the best tunes that can grace my earbuds gold diamond eardrum ticklers crafted by the finest soundsmiths my dad listens to more elevator music than anyone I've ever met okay Amanda Uh, let's just go with this. Let's, let's stick with our original answer. That seemed like that seemed very mid. <laughs> Maybe the other answer is the correct one, but right. Cool. Well, I'll uh, be making the rounds. Feel free to stop by later. Is he as afraid of people? Is he as afraid of people as you are? He might be. Let me introduce you to Damien. Uh, Joseph beckons to a tall man in gothic attire over to the conversation. Good evening, friends. Damien, this is our new neighbor, Brian. Ah, uh, so lovely to meet you. Damien shakes my hand and then bows. If you are ever interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds rad. Splendid. Well, I must be off. Perhaps our paths show cross again. Damn, what a classy dude. Wow, I think I've actually met everybody else. Great. I bet you're excited. So if I didn't meet people, I just get introduced to them through that? Okay. Great. I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. I made it and I mill around and try to get some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at the deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Uh, I don't want to have to make more friends. So who am I going to romance? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I've got to, I got to get to know the characters more. Uh, let's see. I don't want to have to make friends. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I go off to school? But I don't want to have to deal with pleasantries. Mm. Dad? Oh, they're going to talk about the weather. Dad. Go do it. Make a friend. How could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. I made it shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around at the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Real quick, let's examine the art. I gotta appreciate the art. I like the hanging lights. I like the paper balls. I like the hanging plants. And that is a lot of baked goods. All right. Uh, surprised to see some familiar, familiar faces. Oh, it's the coffee guy. Or is he the music guy? Isn't he both? I thought it was the coffee music guy. Didn't I meet that guy at the bar? Didn't this guy throw a frisbee at my head? That mysterious goth guy. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. I better investigate. Um, oh, I like burger time. I'm hoping we get the chance to talk to all of them. Right now, I want to find out what's up with Damien. And Joseph's interesting as well. I want to find out what was up with our last meeting at the bar. I spot Joseph chatting with Damien by the grill. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm... Oh, wait. That's Joseph? I got. I think I got Joseph and... Uh, was it another J name? The guy at the bar. What's his name? I can't, I've already forgotten. Robert. That's Robert. Why do I think that was Joseph? So I'm curious. Can you walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It proves artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood. And it complements the crimson interior perfectly. It's definitely an interesting choice. Thank you. I am very proud of my abode. 
Ryan, I was just having a conversation with Damien about his aesthetic design decisions. Ah, oh, greetings once again, Brian. Do tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone's so friendly and welcoming. Amanda walks up to the conversation. Hi, it's Damien, right? My name's Amanda. At your service. What a pleasure it is to meet you. Damien finishes the, serv the sentence with a flourish and a bow, producing a simple rose and offering it to Amanda. Huh. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Oh. My, you do know how to treat a lady. Hey. Uh. Hello, Amanda. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's ten kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Oh. Hey, hey, won't you come play with us? Mm. Um, come play with us forever. Yeah. Guys, enough with the creep. Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked about this. Huh. Christian and Christy slowly back away. Demon children demon children uh let's see where uh where do you think they got that from mary pops into the conversation wine in hand i uh don't know mary takes a long sip of the wine i think i might have taped over veggie tales vhs with the shining who knows she takes another sip of her wine where's krish wasn't he with you you had him a moment ago. He's probably stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be all right. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Ain't my first time to the rodeo. Hey, she's bringing up rodeo. She's got to be Southern. It's my fourth. I've squeezed four little sweetheart. Would you do me a favor and find Krish? That would be great. I'm sure he's fine. Mary? Yeah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? Huh. Ah, Lucian, have I introduced you to Brian yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That is no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Whatever, sir. Lucian bows again. Um, Mr. Christian, Mr. Christiansen, may I have a veggie burger, sir? Of course, his name is Christiansen. Wait, so one of their name is one of their kids' name is Christian Christiansen. Hmm, interesting. Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Make that two veggie burgers. Do you know some people in the veget in the Victorian area era were vegetarians? They described carnivorous type people as blood lappers. Dad, hey. that's really interesting, Damien. Joseph turns to the grill with a hint of a tattoo peeks out from underneath his sleeve. I didn't. I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. I can't see it from here. Uh, whoa, is that a tattoo? <laughs> yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's so cool. Want to see mine? Oh, my. What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. Oh, yeah, you can see it down here on his left arm. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Lucian! We'll talk about this later. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful, though, that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is a way cooler pa youth pastor than I thought. I just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb of the Bible. 
I wonder what he did before preaching. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really clocked in on who I'm going to pursue. I, uh, still getting introduced. I mean, we still haven't. We just ran into, uh, Damien and Matt. Uh, I like the vibes of Hugo, though, so let's talk to him next. Hmm. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over and say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're a unique byproduct of the social and political climate of the time and place. And to try to make something like, say, the Rokoto period, and compare it to postmodernism in America, you're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to see so seem to see. S Cindy sold seashells by the seashore. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Um, let's talk to Craig. Let's provide him some help. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. Had resistance training go the other day. Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arms again and waves them around. Also, I'm sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. Yeah, I feel like running around with a baby on your chest might upset upset their tummy. Just an idea. How you said Nolan in? Um, I, I never get too comfortable. New place is perfect. Almost done. Well, it seems like we're already unpacked. It's really cozy. The neighborhood's beautiful. I'm so glad we moved here. And I'm even more glad that we're right next to next to my old best friend. Greg gives me a playful punch on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, you. Ow. <laughs> I remember that hurting less in the past. Nice. Sorry, sorry. I've been doing push-ups and stuff. Brian, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Sure. Oh, God. I just realized I've been doing the same voice for them. Um, sure seems like your daughter... Oh, God. Um, sure seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Ow, 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 my eye. Oh, I'm already bad enough at remembering voices. This is going to be terrible. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and waving them, weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? Oh, she looks like Clementine. It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cute in it. Hey. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Hey. Oh, am I cute now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before when you put it on. Hey, hey Brian, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmen Sita. Oh. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually. Amanda, do you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop? And my old college friend and uh, your teacher? Oh, oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Ah. Yep. You still going to get give me that overdue term paper? <laughs> uh, great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger gun move from me. I'm very proud. Oh. The girls are all fashion icons. Honestly, yeah, bro. Carmen Cita just reminds me of um, Clementine from The Walking Dead Telltale, so automatically I'm defensive of her. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? <laughs> Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. Huh? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Ernest Hemingway. Come on, Hugo. That's kind of a brutal name, man. Hmm. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. 
I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long draw of a cigarette and then flicks it into a gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. Last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. He nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread onto my lawn, burned down half of my yard too. <sighs> Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Mm. Hey everybody, sorry about that. Brian, this is my son Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Hmm? Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Uh, yeah, good for you. Hmm. Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the failing economy. Ooh, spicy, okay. Ouch. Uh. Ernest. Yeah, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts his earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was... That was certainly something. He seems nice. Hugo puts his head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry. He's having a really tough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad, and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are there any of us that are cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? I mean, I'll be honest, that that flower thing's pretty cool. What? I'm cool as a cucumber. See, that right there. You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I, uh, I don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we become the machine that, once, that we once raged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. You may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Amanda! I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. As much as we all want it, I don't think it is important. I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. I mean, it just doesn't work. Look at me and Ernest. Oh. Our job is as parents to make sure our kids turn out okay. Mm. Yeah, you're right. But it's nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Manda. We get along well, but there might be a kind. Uh, but there might come a time when we don't like that. When when it when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Oh. Don't let us eat up your time, Brian. Go meet some of the other people around the neighborhood. Oh well, that was lovely. I really liked Matt and Hugo. They're both very nice, very nice characters. Um. Let's go, Robert. Well, what am I thinking about? I'm not going to skip over these guys for burger time. I glance across the yard and notice Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't think I want to deal with being one up by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh, yeah, that was just last night. Oh, no, they caught me staring. Oh, no, Brian's waving me over. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. <laughs> Brian, how the heck are you? Sitting into the neighborhood all right? Oh, you betcha. Got the living room in order, at least. That's good to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50-inch in there. Oh my god, Brian has a 50-inch cock. Jesus Christ. The game looks great in high def. Oh boy. Brian, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night out in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. Hugo deserves smooches. Also, Craig. 
Yeah, Kirk's pretty nice. I don't know. I feel like... I don't know. I don't know. I'm still examining the characters, but so far my two top candidates would probably be Hugo and Matt. They just they both seem pretty chill. And then I I have a uh, as someone interested in going into teaching, I simp for teachers. It like is I like teachers thing. Not I like teachers thing, but like I think teachers are cool. I don't want to fuck my teachers. That's weird. Uh, do Craig or Robert? Mm. We'll see, Kevin. This is my dad dating experience, okay? I'll take your advice on some of the smaller choices, but this is my dad dating experience. It's good to see you talking to your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. Wait, I did. It's good to see you talking to your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. Taking your daughter out like that. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside Brian raised his eyebrows at me being inside making art she won a local competition for that art yep did I put it on too strongly Robert stares at me blankly for a second anyway I haven't gone camping in years not since the last time same here well things changed once you have kit wait what happened last time Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid. Met him in my army days. Came from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. Anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle when the root bridge snaps. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny Boy's screaming now, crying for his mama, losing blood. We're about two days out from the next living soul, and here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the wound, but now i got a fireman, fireman carry a six foot, 180-pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you. There are moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny Boy behind. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got Johnny Boy back to civilization, but I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. <laughs> I hope you guys like me getting close to the mic for that. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went inner tubing down a river and we lost a flip flop. Missed that kid. Brian and I laugh nervously. Or am I kidding? Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. <sighs> Amanda and Daisy barrel up to us, laughing. Daisy's holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. Uh, what did I do for her? We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Right. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Oh. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess. We'll just get out of the truck. The imaginary truck. Yeah. Anyways, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will you survive this arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. <laughs> That's cold-blooded. I like that. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert? <laughs> Wait a second. Are you guys playing? Long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that show. It's the best. Especially that episode where Callum hides Flint key Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed rune and sending the spirit after him? Yeah. It's such quality reality television. I don't watch a whole lot of television, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. All right, Daisy, I just found a couple of bugs. They're going to make a great meal. Lots of protein. Got to keep us from starving out here in this harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right over there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Yeah. Okay. But not an actual fire. Because we're playing pretend? Yeah. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a couple of kids. 
Man, I've never seen her get along with someone so quickly. I guess Amanda just sort of has that way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm, besides he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we could have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people, too. Oh, kids, right? Gotta love them. You are required by law. I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along pretty well, but the thought of continually hearing out Brian's accomplishments is, is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellows. And without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets the patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think it's my first time in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing on patties, perfectly grilling onions on the side, one after another, the dads take notice. And a crowd around Joseph, and a cr and crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. You probably don't know this, Brian, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. He's ungrillievable. I've tried to get on his level, but I just can't catch up. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Must we keep talking about this? Can't we just appreciate the artist? I've never seen him make a mistake. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Please stop. <laughs> All the children at the party begin to boo the glorious display of puns in unison. All right, guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. The dad jokes, Jesus. Favorite part of the game so far. Amanda groans. We all grab our food and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Man, it's so wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? Feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Hmm? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. She decides to get into babysitting games. She'll really make a killing. <laughs> hey, why don't you add us all on Dad Book? D dad Book? Yeah, it's a great social media network for dads to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beers our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmesita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. Amanda and I walk back to the place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Mm, I mean, I got a burger in me. I feel like I was at a networking event. Wish we could have been playing a parental match for checkers. Uh, none of these are exactly positive. I got to get LinkedIn notifications out of this. I just know it. Mm -hmm. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, at least you got some other, met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. I bet that's how we get to choose who we go out on dates with. Maybe I will, if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Uh, you, oh yeah, we've already read that. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm, seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. Bro, the cauliflower on those plates sucks doo-doo. Because it's always like barely it's not it's not cooked it's just raw cauliflower cooked cauliflower is good raw cauliflower is doo-doo any big plans for this evening actually yeah i'm going out with some friends oh uh -huh. is that okay 
Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices, of course. And call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home with all the lights off, are you? How long did the gov packet take me? Uh, not too long. A lot of it you could look up pretty easy, and then all the court cases were really quick to do, go through. There's one part that I wasn't able to do. Uh, what? No, I've been done with that, and I will never do that. I've never done that, and I never will do that. Okay, do you have plans for tonight? I, uh... My plans were to kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda. But I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Work on some stuff, see how long I can sleep for, throw a party. Throw a party? Am I actually throwing a party? I wanna throw a party. A real rager. All the other dads in the neighborhood are invited. See if I can get you a spot on the list, but honestly, it's looking pretty tight. You may just have to wait in line. I know the guy at the door. I'll get in no problem. I'm just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on some wine to dine mastermind with celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin Chapman's making a roasted rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. I'd love to be able to cook like that. Although, I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food with real nutritional substance. Man. Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of all time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind, and also one episode of a cooking show called Meat Hell. I'm not even sure what that one was about, just a lot of yelling. I glance at my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wandered in the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll reply soon. Unless she's driving home now. Mm, unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond, because I've definitely taught her better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I've learned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again. And then my phone. Nothing yet. Hmm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes, and I'm really worried. The episode of Gavin Chabin's Meat Hell are not only ass assaging my, uh, my anxiety, but possibly ex exacerbating it with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who was she was even who she was even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Who is Emma P? I decided to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could have happened to her. Oh thank God, it's her. Amanda opened the doors and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Uh, yep. But now that I know she's okay, I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? Amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket. Hmm. Oh, whoops, guess I didn't see those. She starts to walk into her room. Amanda Ann. Huh? Whoa, we're pulling out the middle name now? Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Mm -hmm. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? Uh, I have a right to be concerned. I don't like your attitude. I was scared. You were responding and it was just... It was just like when your mom... I have to stop myself from tearing up. <gasps> oh, Dad... I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head on my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. <sighs> Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Oh, I think I I didn't oh I didn't think he was gonna bring up the the wifey. That's sad. 
Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. As I'm falling asleep, one thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brewed some strong coffee and made some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. Uh, I see a coffee pot, but not a coffee machine. Oh, unless that's supposed to be silver. Or not silver, like a uh, stainless steel and it's a all-in-one pot. Mm. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, mm. I thought about what you said last night. Mm. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it, and I didn't. Honestly, I didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well, uh, I trust you make good choices. I'm sorry for freaking out on you. Good. Okay, I know what the wrong choice is. I trust you to make good choices. I'm sorry for freaking out. I think saying I'm sorry is more important. You're an adult now. I shouldn't have gotten so worked up. Mm. Team Beans. Team Beans. Bro, I fucking love that. Team Beans has got to be a thing now. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Bless you. I made a scarf down the eggs in the time it takes for me to wash the pan. All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Mm. What? What's dad book? Ugh. It's a social media platform. Wait. Mm. What? What's a social media platform? <laughs> dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. Mm. All right. I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Ugh. I managed to spend the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on Dadbook, which turns out is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. Dad. All right, Pops. Got to fill out your profile. Uh, let's get some likes and dislikes. <gasps> I got to do it. On a Friday night, you are most likely to... All right, I'll try to do my most accurate. Turn my mentions and bad, bad puns sink into blissful oblivion. Fall asleep while watching History Channel, Netflix, and Grill. Polish my coin collection. Mm, most of the time I watch YouTube. So I guess History Channel is close enough. I do like history, so yeah. If you had to take one thing with you onto a desert island, what would it be? I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. A boat, obviously. Uh, cast away on DVD for instructional purposes the lost shaker of salt and my trusty grill let's go with a boat what are your turn ons strong dad arms, tennis shoes with long white socks a well manicured lawn street smarts top tier grillmanship, comfortable with crying mm, let's go I do enjoy someone who can cook but also I can cook let's do street smarts uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Technical writer for manuals and instructions, safety boat captain, pro skater who's also an astronaut, a good father, the president of space. Aw, a good father. That's sweet. Let's do that. What was your favorite movie genre? War documentaries, Sean Connery's entire filmography, anything on Laserdisc, romantic comedies, whatever will make me cry, old comedies that haven't aged well. Django Unchained is a pretty funny movie. Um, uh, which of these is most accurate? Definitely not these two. I know like four Sean Connery movies. Let's do old comedies. What's your ideal eight? Napping together, doing a thousand piece puzzle, eating a healthy dinner at 4 p.m., trying to geocache but getting hopefully <laughs> arson, being emotionally vulnerable, napping. What do you never leave home without? Sensible cardigan cardigan my sick vape a book of word jumbles and a pen a cool knife my cripplingly low self-esteem i frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home sometimes my cripplingly low self-esteem i spend a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theories how proud i am of my child potential ends of the world if i'll ever be able to love myself as much as i love my grill when can i get my next cup of coffee and lawnmower modifications conspiracy theories are always fun Profile complete. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could spend all day on here looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them, or more of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dad. 
bird. Oh, we've already seen that. You got dads. <laughs> you got dads. So who do we want to respond to first? Hmm. I was getting the best vibes from either Matt or Hugo. Kevin says Kevin and Zoe say Craig. Kevin also says Robert. I'm not really feeling vibes from Joseph. Uh, Damien's interesting, but romantic or like relationship vibes not really for either of these two. And then Brian, I'm kind of just neutral on. Um, we do have two votes in chat for Craig. Let, you know what? Let's go talk to Matt. He seems he's so far he's my favorite. He seems the chillest. Avid music enthusiast, confident, uh, passionate coffee drinker. You can find me most days selling bean juice over the coffee spoon or hanging out at the park with my amazing daughter. Hit me up about 80s no wave music. On Friday night, you're most likely to perfect my cold brew setup one drip at a time, baby. If you had to take things with you onto a desert island, what would it be? Fine tunes to pass the time away. What are your turns on? Multi-instrumentalism. And what did you want to be when you grew up? A barista, weirdly enough. Okay. Let's read all of them before we, uh, before we message. Dad of three, business entrepreneur and fitness enthusiast. Juggling work, family, and fitness is a tough gig, but somebody's got to do it. On a Friday night, you'd most likely to get one last good cardio session in. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? A box of energy bars. What are your turn-ons? A sub-six-minute mile. Uh, what do you want to be when you grew up? A beer pong world champion. Oh, wait. Is there more? Oh, there is. Shit. Uh, what's your favorite movie genre? Buddy cop movies forever. What's your ideal date? Scaling huge, dangerous mountain for fun. Uh, what do you never leave home without? An extra tubey? An extra I say tubey. An extra tube of energy gel. Energy gel? Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about my mild time. It used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Interesting. So it looks like this is like the main hub because I see multiple hearts. So I'm, we'll just read through these as we go through them, I guess. That'll be easier. Um, what's your favorite movie genre? Shit with subtitles. What's your ideal date? We used to go to the animal shelter. We go to the animal shelter and seriously can consider adopting a cat. Uh, what do you never leave home without? My headphones, both in ear and over ear, just in case. I spend a lot of time thinking about where did writing commas into song titles come from and where did it go? Did we all agree that it's just a bad idea? You know what? Matt Sella, let's message Matt. Let's get a nice date in with Matt before we have to end stream. So we are already about two hours. Get whatever job you want, just make sure it includes health insurance. I navigate to Matt's dad book and type out a message. Hey man, great getting to see you at the BBQ. We should definitely hang out soon. You're free later? A minute or two later, I hear a ding and see Matt's response. Hey dude, I'm so down for that. Actually, I'm catching a show tonight at the Sound Garden. Wanna come out? What's the Sound Garden? Oh, wow, he responded fast. It's a concert venue, but also a lot of people who listen to back listen to. Oh, it's also a band that a lot of people listen to back when it was cool to have sound soul patches. Oh man, I haven't been to a real concert since Amanda was born. Am I ready for this? Okay, I've decided that Matt is my favorite. Very, is it the cat? It's the cat. While I'm thinking, another message pops up on the screen. PUP's playing tonight. Cool little indie pump, indie punk rock band out of Canada. Should be a fun one. I don't know what you're allowed to. I didn't know that you're allowed to string that many words together to describe a band. Whatever. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Oh. Wait. Wait. What was that last one? Wait. When was the last time I went to a concert? I mentally backtrack through decades of lost memories of denim jean jackets and moral panic over teenagers turning to the cult. Oh god, I had a mullet back then. Oh god, I thought it was cool. Oh god, other people thought it was cool. I finally remember the strange 80s prog rock I used to listen to and mentally envision all the airbrushed vans in the parking lot. Man, how did anybody survive the 80s? Okay, so I haven't been to a concert in a long time. What do you even do at concerts now? I spend most of the day pants, pacing around the house and thinking about my relationship with coolness. I mean, I always thought I was cool. 
at least relative to a bunch of other dads my age. Dad, what are you doing? I look over to see Amanda at the door, just getting home from school. Damn, that took us a while. Her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she's been crying. Hey, what's wrong, Panda? Oh, nothing. I'm fine. I just got sad because I realized that society collectively refuses to take pop music seriously despite the fact that some of the most interesting musical innovations are coming out of that genre. I think it's just another thing that we write off because we can't take young women or their interests seriously. That's pretty messed up. You have to tell me it's actually wrong. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? Mm, that's a little forceful. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there is, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. And I'll always be here for you. Whether you need a shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to kick somebody's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Okay. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'd tell me when she's ready. Hmm. Anyways, what's up? Hmm. Amanda, how do I be cool? Hmm. Let me put on a, a pot of coffee first. This is going to be a long night. No, seriously. Matt invited me to a concert, and I haven't been to one since you were born. Yeah, you have. You took me to one when I was 12, remember? I'm suddenly overwhelmed by the memory of screaming preteens. Oh, oh, God. I tried so hard to forget. The one where I had to cram with you in line so you can get a good spot, and then you cried and screamed the whole time? Dad? It was so much more than that, and I'm not even ashamed to say it. Oh, you're not ashamed? Oh, you're not ashamed? You seem pretty ashamed when I found all those drawings you made of bo dancing boys kissing in your trapper keeper. Yeah, well, you'd even find the good stuff. Anyways, we should all be... You should be all set for your concert. If you, re if you remember that, just bring a big glittery sign and cry a lot, and you'll fit right in. Well, it's a smaller place, and I think Matt mentioned they're a punk band hmm. like diy glitter punk thrash straight edge come on dad give me something to work with here hmm. are they post punk proto punk c punk jeremy punk what's jeremy punk yeah. i made that one up to see if i can get away with it huh. hmm. they're not positive hardcore are they uh he said that they're canadian punk <laughs> oh yeah you'll be fine does the idea of Canadian punk seem contradictory to you? I don't see friendship and politeness as the core tenets of the punk scene. Well, punk is kind of a big genre that might not be as dangerous as you think it is. It became so much more than just counterculture rebellion. What I'm trying to say is, just enjoy the music. That's it? I mean, yeah, it's not like you're going to jump into the mosh pit or anything. Well, that's comforting. And if a strange dude in a set your goals that he offers offers to buy you merch, don't accept it and definitely don't go on three awful dates with him afterward where he takes you to a nice restaurant and then forgets his wallet literally three times in a row. What? Huh. Never mind. Just have a blast tonight. Interesting. I show up at the coffee spoon at eight in what I hope is concert appropriate attire. I see Matt out front locking up the door to the shop. Oh, I hope we get to go inside at some point. I assume that's it. Hey, you made it. Ready for tonight? It's been a while. I could... Yeah, of course. I definitely know what I'm talking about. Ready? I was... Let's say it's been a while. Yeah, I gotta admit, I haven't been to a real concert since Pet Rocks were cool. I have no idea what I'm in for. Did your daughter make it... Make you take her to one of those boy band concerts where everyone holds a sign and scream cries? Yeah. I got two lined up next month. Still can't get the glitter out of my car from the last one. Stay strong. But dude, I get to take you to your first concert in a long time. It's gonna be awesome. Just hang in with me, Brian. You'll and you'll be a, and you'll be good. This scene is super supportive. It'll be a blast. Quick question. Shoot. What is scene? Matt lets out a tiny laugh. Sorry, sorry. It's just weird because scene can be described as a music scene as it pertains to a community of people like the same genre, but can also be to, can be used to describe a genre of music that no one wants to admit they're into. Matt looks off into the distance. He's into middle distance. He says nothing, but I can tell he's thinking never again. That's confusing. 
You'll get it. The important thing is tonight you enjoy yourself. Come on, let's head to the show. Oh, he seems nice. After waiting in a short line to get in, we finally find ourselves at a small venue with a stage at the end and a bar at the other. Most people here are closer to Amanda's age than mine. I suddenly feel very out of place. Man, yaning youth, yaning youth, waning youth is showing. I'm suddenly aware of my mortality. When were all the good years in my life? Will Amanda still love me as we grow older? Wait, sea punk is actually a genre? Um, Matt, you made it. I'm just gonna do basic voice until then. A younger kid runs up and high fives Matt. The kid runs off. Matt turns to me, shuddering. I get nervous when people surprise high five me. Me too. I'm like a small animal. Loud noises and large groups of people frighten me. Do you also enjoy curling up in a spat and a spat patch of sunlight to take a nap? See, this is why we, this stream can't go that long. I'm just gonna completely lose my ability to talk. That's my favorite thing to do. A couple of other people take notice of the mass in the crowd and say hey as well. Matt waves and hugs a couple people. He seems really in his element here. Matt turns his attention back to me. I'm so afraid of all these people. <laughs> oh, let's go grab a beer. Matt and I line up at the bar in the back where a couple of older concert goers hang out. A couple more people notice Matt and tip their drinks at him. Seems like you're a popular guy here. I relate so much to Matt. Small, easily scared, loves nap, loves cats. Um, yeah, I go to a lot of shows. This is a really cool spot. But it's time like these when I realize I can only be charming and funny for like five minutes before I run out of stuff to talk about. <gasps> Anybody who's watched stream knows that's me. And then I become keenly aware of my, where my hands are. And that there's no comfortable mouth in your tongue for your place to rest. In your mouth for your tongue to rest. God damn it, where do I put my tongue? <laughs> See? Well, I know I've known you for more than five minutes, and I still think you're charming and funny. Just you wait. Right. We grab our drinks. This scene seems really friendly. I don't know why people wouldn't want to admit that they listen to it. <laughs> ha, let's go check out the merch. Oh. Matt and I walk over to a small booth in the corner of the room where a crusty looking teenager guards his selection of shirts and records. He singles me out across the room and hops onto his chair. Sir, I don't appreciate that much of your happy trail being visible. Step on up! Get your merch here! I got t-shirts, I got tank tops, I got all the gifts and accoutrements a discerning concert girl of considerable taste might want. You! I just to, my, to myself, my face flushing red. Yeah, you! You look like a fellow knows her music. How's about a fine 12-inch long playing vinyl record made and distributed by Pop, Canada's premier punk rock outfit? Uh, tally ho, good sir. Uh, tally ho. We'll see here, fine shopkeep. Your, your enthusiastic salesmanship has aroused my interest and suspicion in equal parts. How can I, a consumer of the finer goods in life, trust your wares to be true of spirit? A fine question from a discerning patron. <gasps> I got the hearts. Okay, Pablo, you can give it a rest. The teen hops off his chair and takes a seat. Your friend looks so lost, I figured I'd give him the old razzle-dazzle. How the hell are you, Matt? Day by day, my man. They do that thing or they high-five, but also turn it into a hug. Your mom doing better? She's still single. If you want to be my dad, I can make that connect. <laughs> and I have to deal with you every single day? Fair enough. Who's your bud? Hey. That's Brian. Thought I'd bring out a concert pal. Pablo leans close to Matt. Is Brian cool? Mm. Matt eyes me. I I am back. He cracks a smile. Yeah. Pablo brings me in for a bro hug. My dude! I'm not sure what to say, but give the courtesy of the courtesy of two pats on the back, as is customary in a society for people who don't who you don't know well, don't know super well, but still want to be friendly to. Pablo's a dildo guard. Kids play the kid plays the hell out of a bass. Yeah, man. When are we starting our witch house band? You know I'm out of the game. It's a shame, you know. Vacant Devail would have slayed. I'll slay once you start actually making music instead of just printing a bunch of band shirts. We got the sickest logo. While Matt and Pablo talk, I check out the merch. These shirts are really nice. 
Looks like the opener's coming on. Let's get a shot up close. Matt and I walk over to the stage where a crowd begins to form. The band walks up on stage and pick a variety of strange instruments. Is that a harpsichord? The lead singer addresses the crowd. He has a mandolin sung on behind his back. Uh, Canadian. Aye, what's... I can't do Canadian. I'm just going to do random accent. Hey, what's up, everybody? We're Jonathan Jones, the Speakeasy Choir. My name's Daniel. Let's start the show. Oh, no. These guys. Oh, they're not the Canadians. What? Without time to respond, the band begins playing the most cacophonous noise I've ever heard. Interesting. What is this? Matt doesn't say anything. He just hands me earplugs. Thanks! I put the earplugs in, and whatever the hell is assaulting my ear gets a lot quieter. For a band this bad, they sure do seem to be having fun. I guess that's what really matters. Jesus, did that Celis just break his bow in half? I don't get this. So the set goes on forever. There's no breaks in the song, and I think one of the band members' jobs is specifically just to burn poetry on stage. I turn to Matt and start to try try to start a conversation. So you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? Hmm. What? Uh So you go to a lot of concerts out here, huh? What? Persistence. So you <laughs> yeah. Matt turns his attention to the show. You can't hear me, so I just stop it and try to enjoy the music. <laughs> it literally is just screaming. Okay, no, this is impossible. How have they been playing the same song? 10 minutes? 20? A year? Eventually, eventually, the set ends but only after the drummer sprains his ankle during his saxophone solo. They promised it was part of the act as he was carried off stage crying. Matt and I both pull our earplugs out. Man, that was... something. I promise Pup is much better. I just... have a lot of questions that I know I'll never get the answer to. Oh yeah, he sprains his ankle at every show. They're being real about that. Let's grab another beer. <laughs> Matt and I work our way out of the crowd and back to the bar. More and more people file into the conscious space as it gets closer to the main act. It's getting kind of crowded in here. We grab our beers and I try to follow Matt back to our spot, but there's so many people that I'm having a hard time keeping up. As I work my way through the throngs of excited concertgoers, I realize I've lost Matt entirely. I stop and look around, seeing nothing but a, sharp, but a sea of hip 20-somethings. I'm lost. How am I ever going to find Matt here? Where's the exit? Are there even exits? What if I'm trapped in this building forever? Am I going to see my daughter ever again? What if the terrible band gets back on stage? What if... Suddenly a hand reaches out to grab me. It's Matt. Almost lost you, buddy. <sighs> I really got nervous there for a second. You and me both, dude. He takes my hand and leads me back toward the stage. I can feel myself blushing a little. We finally settle back into our spot and wait for the band to start. Busy place, huh? Yeah, Pup really brings out a crowd. So you go to concerts a lot? Oh yeah, it's one of my absolute favorite things in the world. I think it's one. Of the, I think it's one thing to listen to music and connect with it, but when you're a room full of people connecting with music just the same way that you are, that's magic. Suddenly, I have the urge to pee. Curse this tiny dad bladder. I've never heard it put that way. That's really beautiful. Also, I have to pee. Hurry up, man. They're about to go on. I squeeze my way out of the crowd towards the restroom. I really should have gone before I left the house, but Amanda was watching beauty videos in the bathroom. She had the eyeliner she had an eyeliner wing thing going halfway across her face, which actually is a pretty good look. I'm so proud of her. I make it to the restroom finally, but it's one of those single person restrooms with the lime forming outside of it. As soon as I finish my business, the band starts. Crap. 
The people that were initially milling around the venue all crowd up against the stage as Pup plays their first song. How am I ever going to find Matt now? Oh, we checked the card. Oh, we already read that one. What the hell? Everybody was switching to the main stage to watch Pup play. I'm sure Matt will be up there too. Gotta get there without being trampled by all these rowdy youths. Is this what I'm wearing? Oh. Um. Oh god. Wait. Oh. Uh we even got permission to whitelist the song for YouTube and Twitch. But their systems are seriously broken that what a bitch. Uh try to get the heart. I'm loving this song though. So Ow the song that you're listening to right now. Ow. Oh, it's a real song? It's a real band? Oh god, oh god. God, I'm mashing as hard as I can. I don't want to interrupt the song because it's actually pretty cool. So we added the song that you're listening to right now. But I gotta don't play the game. It's better than risking content ID. Do you streamers and let's players? I have one degree. I'm finally able to work my way through the crowd to where Wat originally was, but he's nowhere to be found. Shoot! Well I guess I should keep look. I'm bumped from I'm bumped into from behind. I find myself in the middle of a bunch of youths running around in the circle to the music. I'm in the pit. How do I get out of the pit? Okay, now he's just making noise. I don't know where a youth shoulders himself into me and moving and keeps moving in a circle. Hey! I guess I'm moving in the circle now. I frantically search for a way out, but all I can see is an ocean of youths rhythm rhythmically slamming into each other. It's a little... Another youth slams into me and I lose my balance. I'm about to topple over. This is it! This is how I die! Trampled under the boots of counterculture. Someone grabs my hand. Someone familiar. I look up and I see Matt. He pulls me back onto my feet. You're wild, dude. Matt throws his arms around me and we jump back into the circle, bashing into youth left and right as Matt plays a killer as Pup plays a killer solo. I didn't know you messed with the pit. Me neither. I can't believe this. I'm having fun. I'm a little mad that I didn't stretch before physical activity, but I'm having fun. The song ends and the pit finally dissipates. Everybody cheers on cheers on Pup. That was a nice song though. I appreciate not having to worry about getting 
you know, sued. Uh, or, I guess, flagged, since they already got it cleared by the band. Maybe I only have enough energy for one song. <laughs> Alright, man. Let's retreat. We'll show these kids it's not how it's done another day. We work our way back home, back to a more comfortable spot in the crowd, and enjoy the rest of the show from a safe distance. Pup puts on an amazing set and basically had to beg themselves off stage after their encore. With the concert over, the crowd begins making their way to the exit. Hey, I'll meet you outside. Gotta say goodbye, but got to say bye to a couple people. I hang outside of the venue until Matt finally shows up. Hey man, thanks for waiting. I got you a present. Matt hands me a t-shirt I was looking at earlier. Aw, whoa, thanks man. Hey. Saw you eyeballing it back at the merch booth. Oh. And I mean, anyone who tears up, who tears it up that hard their first time at a concert has to have, ha ugh, concert deserves a reward. Uh, Amanda will love this. I'm never taking this off. The youths will finally accept me. Let's, I'm never taking this off. I will continually wear this until it is tattered and a little smelly so that I can truly embody funk pa funk punk fashion. Hey Matt. Hey, hey it's Pup. <laughs> oh, I'm sure this is the actual band. Uh hey dude, you didn't realize you were here. Hey. I'm so glad I can make it. You guys put on a great show. Uh I gotta do it. Thanks. Hey. Well, see you around. Wait, you know Pup? Hey. Oh yeah, met him a couple times when they first started touring. Good kids. Whoa. Come on, let's grab some diner food. I suddenly realized how hungry I am. Man, those mosh pits take a lot out of you. Matt and I walk to a tiny little diner with a cute neon sign. We tear into some bacon and eggs in a corner booth. Oh. So there I am, in the pit, trying to explain to the face tattoo guy that I didn't mean to elbow him in the face tattoo, but he's already seeing red. Not to, not from the tattoo, which coincidentally was red. He's lumbering towards me, and there's nowhere to go. It's the end for me, right? Then out of nowhere, I get this idea. I just lean back, spread my arms, and just like that, I'm crowd surfing away from him in slow motion. You should have seen the look on his face. Bought him a beer afterwards, and we're cool. We still follow each other on social media. Yes, beautiful kids. Glad you guys worked it out. Yeah, man. Just goes to show you that not the punk's not dead. It just drives a minivan. Has to hire a babysitter. So how'd you get to see all these amazing concerts? Uh, I used to tour in a band. We were small, but it got us to travel all around the states. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, we were poor and had to scrape together a lot to scrape a lot together just to survive. I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. But yeah. So I knew a bunch of those people at the show. Music like this builds an amazing community, especially in a town like this. It's a lot of positive energy and good vibes. I got that feeling. Plenty of friendly people, especially that Pablo kid. Oh man, everybody loves Pablo. His mom's been raising him all, him on her own, and you can tell he's been trying. That it's been tough on both of them. I know he looks up to me, so I try to help him out whenever I can. That's really nice of you. Thanks. Us single parents really have to look out for each other. How's Carmen Sita? She says she wants to learn the drums. Oh boy. It'll be loud. I'll need to take a lot of aspirin. But I'll manage. Can't really blame her. I'm suddenly very grateful that all my daughter's hobbies are super quiet. Photography, collaging, whatever it is she, whatever it is she does on the internet. Thanks, Amanda. I'm trying to be supportive of Carmen Sita's rebellious phase, but I guess that defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? I think it'd be a good daddy daughter activity to find something to rebel against together hey. like what uh um, let's save again consumerism duh why do we gotta get up early the day after thanksgiving just line up and buy things Whoa, why can't we just like share things hmm. gumrad you're speaking of a you're speaking of dangerous things here <laughs> he and i laugh we keep digging into our big plates of greasy diner food the breakfast i ordered for for the diner is obviously hitting is absolutely hitting the spot my my reading is deteriorating as we go man being a single dad is rough sometimes it's a lonely feeling i understand that all too well i mean at least we have the rest of the dads to talk to yeah i just 
I don't know. I get really nervous sometimes talking to people. Matt gets nervous talking to people? But he's so cool. Me too. I've never really considered myself an extrovert. I've never really considered myself an introvert. I'm just uncomfortable in every situation always. Ah, uh, you're fine. You're actually really easy to talk to, you know that? I smile. Matt and I spend the rest of the night trading daughter stories. Turns out our kids are a lot alike. We finish up our late night dinner, dinners and head out. We walk back to the cul-de-sac. Back to our respective houses. Tonight was a blast, man. Loved it. Although I'm probably going to feel it on my knees in the morning. <laughs> you and me both. I uh, don't usually like going to things alone. It was really cool to have you with me. I'm glad. All right. Gone at Chris for tonight. Stay cool, man. He called me cool. Matt called me cool. I walked into the house, my heart in my throat. Amanda popped her head out into the room. Hey, Pops, how's the show? Matt thinks I'm cool. You don't say. Amanda Panda, Matt thinks I'm cool. Blind lead the bind, huh? Wow, I just got dunked on by my own child. Unbelievable. Hey, Amanda, remind me, which one of us just tore it up in the pit at a punk show, and which one of us just spent four hours probably watching the Tiny, t tiny House Hunting Amish Triplets Extreme Edition? Damn, they got some cool shows in this universe. You could be getting brunch with Craig right now, but you just plan. I like Matt. First of all, how dare you? That show is a classic. Second of all, you moshed in the pit? Who even are you? I am your <laughs> extremely cool dad. All right, I'm hitting the hay pops. I'll see you in the pit. Night, kiddo. Managing debt is just part of being an adult. Ew. Date complete! Oh, what did we get? If we didn't get an S, I'm gonna cry. A! Only an A? Awkward. Tiny bladder, grunge, baby boomer, grill dad, band puns. I only got an A, but I know there's an S. I bet all I get. I bet I could have done better in the game. I got hit a lot. Oh my god! Look how many points I got. Is that sixty nine million? Nice. King of carrot flowers. I'm changing the tire. Make sure to tighten the bolts. All right. While I'm doing my afternoon word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull up through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple letters with large envelopes to the slot. Takes a couple hours for the, it takes a couple tries for them to get it in. Sadly, ladies and ladies and gentlemen, that is actually where we're gonna have to leave today's video. I know, I know. Wait, let's hit that. Let's hit that. This this intro music is so good. Daddy. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, alright, alright. Sadly, yes, that is where we're gonna have to leave off today's video. I actually really enjoyed this one. Seems like you guys enjoyed it a lot too. So, you know, at least for another episode, uh, next Wednesday, I think we're gonna be continuing this one. Uh, genuinely, it was really great time, and seems like you guys, like, I mean, we've had at least four viewers this entire video. So, uh, you guys can definitely look forward to seeing another one of these. If you want to see another one of these, let me know. Hit up the Discord, uh, where I do all types of gaming and streaming content. We've now introduced gaming chats where you can meet up and talk with other people who play different games and uh, <laughs> into stream sadness. I know it is sad. So uh, check that out. Uh, all you got to do is go to the about page and click on the big beautiful discord button also if you go to my about page right under my name you can click on my instagram where i post uh videos saying what i'm going to be doing asking you guys what you want me to do all that sweet stuff and check out my youtube at brian the bean boy uh you really support me by doing that and that's where i put all of these lovely vods so you can watch these over and over and over as many times as you'd like so Thank you to everybody who is part of this video, everybody who watched, who participated. Thank you to um, our followers for today, Mr. Johnny Universe and Zoe for subscribing yet again. You guys are awesome, and I really appreciate you guys. 
Uh, I hope I see you guys on Friday, 7 p.m. We will be playing more Shadow of War.